fellow hunters, this is Haroja Shine, and I'm here with your week three update. So we did have a key release. I I will have a, a link um, here for the uh, what the clue was, which was the hunted key. And what a key it is. Uh, this key is very different from the other previous keys that have been released so far. This key requires the use, as I said during uh, the Clue Day announcement, that you have to use a personal network, some internet sleuthing, and tracking down people. So you, you have to work within a group, in essence, uh, meet somebody in, in real life, and attain these certain objects to, in order to be able to uh, attain a portion of the key that you have to get the other piece the other piece so three pieces in order to be able to unlock the hunted key and so far as a recording of this episode no one has been able to do that so far uh, or at least they have not announced that they have solved the key and the website has not flipped saying it's been found so let's kind of get into it so just kind of recap here the hunted key which is the sixth key and the clue is research assistant so if you click on it you have this information uh, sometimes in the course of the hunt you may be called to do a favor for the vast and mostly unseen group of people who are tasked with making sure this and future hunts are run without any issues in this case three members of the organization are in need of a subject of a specific object to complete a task the nature which you don't need to concern yourself with. Hunters are expected to be able to find anything anywhere, so we assume you'll be able to find your field agents with a simple photograph. If that's not enough, maybe you're not cut out for the hunt. And then you're bound by these rules where you have to, when you find the object for the specific agent, you have to hand it with both hands, um, give them the object, they give you the key, and that's it. That's supposed to be the limit of the interaction. Now, when I uh, did the clue day announcement, uh, these bottom agents right here, the information was inputted wrong where you had the clue for agent one under agent three. That's There's no hint or anything like that. It was just uh, the game makers announced that it was just a wrong implementation. So these are the people you're supposed to, you know, take the information, uh, everything from the face of the photo to the particular uh, image of right here and the books in the background the fact that you have to find a book and we'll talk about these different objects uh, all of this is an you know an effort to basically as we go through the different agents to get people to work together to obtain this key uh, each of these keys so this has been announced for this specific key that once whoever the first person has found it like if you get agent one agent two agent three that's it. Once it's been understood that someone or a group have um, collected uh, the, the different, you know, solved the clues and collected the different keys and, and combined it together, then the key is done. So you have this uh, burning chrome is a clue here for, for this field agent, the object that you need to get. And then here, or ornament of uh, Abihanra is the object here. All of these are books, and we'll, we'll talk about the books in a second. And this is the person you're supposed to be looking for. So some groups have stated that they have found all three. Some groups have said that they need help for different ones. There, and we'll talk about that in a moment when we talk about um, people trying to find these these individuals. But that is the, these were the clues, and you had to basically. Um, we'll talk about we'll talk about this. No, no. Now let's talk about the clue, the clues. Well, no, let's talk about this. So there was an announcement that was May 1st where, um, from the Twitter, from the official Twitter for the game makers, our field agents need their books ASAP to complete some high priority research for the hunt. To expedite that, a few clues. Agent two is not in the United States. Agent three is also not in the United States. Agents one and two or three are real humans not uh, GA in artifacts or any other pseudo-human forms of life. If your remains agents are not found soon, they may turn to alternative methods of finding the research material they need and their keys will be returned to the vault. 
So just like Disney, the, this these keys will go into the vault and the hunter key will not, I guess, be used if no one solves it to be able to combine with the other, with the 400 keys that you need to find and unlock the puzzle. Which makes it interesting that this is the first time we stated this because people have been curious about like what happens to, uh, you know, the clues and keys that are not found because as of so far, this is taken, this was released uh, Sunday, uh, mid-afternoon around like 2 Pacific Standard Time that what happens when someone doesn't solve a key uh, or doesn't even state they solve a key. There could be a bunch of keys that people have solved but no one knows about because they weren't public about it or the fact that as the game maker said that the key might go in the vault and so there might be some gaps that might, might make the game a little bit longer, might make the game a little bit more interesting because you don't know exactly who has you know all the keys. So it's nice that they put this out here. Mind you, we're only six keys in, we're very early in the game, so this is something you have to keep in the back of your mind that, you know, they might put a key back in the vault or they might leave it unsolved. We don't know yet. So far we haven't had an unsolved uh, key. But this key has, you know, has taken a while. Um, pretty much within a, the first day, all the other keys have been solved. But this one, it's, it's, you know, it's time of the recording Thursday. This hasn't been solved yet. That could easily change and who knows what happens when the next key clue drops. So this is the book that people have to find, the ornament of Abaha for Field Agent 3. Uh, it's the single greatest Tibetan commentary never previously translated and one of the most well known inside of works of classic Indian Buddhism. Uh, a very interesting book, I should say. Um, people have been trying to get the e-copies. People are trying, you have to get a physical copy, so people are either going to use bookstores or going through Amazon. Rumor has it there there are certain books that have um, sold out in certain regions or certain places, not easily detained. Um, Given that uh, some of these agents might be in uh, different countries, to be able to send or transport that book to a member of your group so that they can hand it to the agent that you think may in fact be um, one of the field agents. It's, it's interesting how this is all coming out. People are just you know snatching this book for themselves, actually starting to read it to see there might be additional clues that might play a part in the game. So there's this book. I personally have never heard of this book before, but I'm not really into Buddhism. I know quite a bit about uh, Indian history and just the general Wicca knowledge of Buddhism, but I don't know about the individual particular books, if you will. Okay, so this is Agent Two's book, which is Burning Chrome. When I first saw it, I was thinking of like hot rods, and then I thought about Google Chrome, but I thought that was too easy, and then um, and then it came, you know, came public. This is a William Gibson book, which made sense. Uh, this particular book I have not personally read. It's one of more, his more, I guess you could say, later novels. I've read some of his earlier stuff. Uh, but Burning Chrome, this is the book that people have been like, have been trying to get this book in. It's like sold out like at secondhand stores and trying to get it from, you know, Amazon or, or Barnes and Noble and stuff like that. That this particular book has, like, you might say, jumped in the um, charts as far as sales go. Uh, but it's a William Gibson book. It's a Tales from the Computer Enhanced Hustlers, John Um What is it? It doesn't give you... So hippies have known about these dangerous technologies for a long time, and the state cracks down hard on them, and not entirely without good reason either. The world cannot run for a long anyway on raves and drugs and loud music, and any fool can see that. There's also a false economy in these supposedly efficient economies because if you run a sustainable event and people attend your event in a car, you can wave goodbye to any benefits you might have yielded from the technology itself. The ubiquity of the car on all other rampant wasteful consumers which often surrounds an event cripples your efforts right from the off. This is thinking very much in a field stage and how long to develop before it can be said to be anything more than a purely experimental but experiment we must. 
So, I guess it kind of gives you a hint about what the book is about. You know, um, William Gibson is very much in the, you know, he's the forefather of uh, cyberpunk. So, and William Gibson is someone that I think was, as an author, we probably should just start reading his entire catalog is somebody that's going to have a significant influence on this game. And then we have the stories of Ibris. In a world where humans are a minority, androids have created their own civilization. Mary Matrix. A wandering storyteller meets the beautiful android Ibis. She tells him seven stories of human and android interactions in order to reveal the secret behind humani humanity's fall. The story takes place centuries in the future where the diminished population of humans lived uncultured lives in their own colonies. They resent the androids who have built themselves a stable and cultural society. In this brutal time, our main character travels from colony to colony as a storyteller, one that speaks of stories of the past. One day he is abducted by Ibis, an android, in the form of a young girl, and told of stories created by humans in the ancient past. The stories that Ibis speaks of are the are the seven novels about the events surrounding the announcement and the development of artificial intelligence, AI, in the 20th to the 21st century. At a glance, these stories do not appear to have any sort of connection, but what is the true meaning behind them, and what are Ibis's real intentions? Uh, I particularly like this particular um, book. Um, it's by Hiroshi, uh, Hiroshi Yakamoto Takimana Nidage is the translator. Uh, just the artwork for this series has always like dazzled me. I personally haven't started reading them yet, but it's like on my list of books that I want to read. And I was a little surprised that this is a book that um, was uh, something as an object to be found. Um, it was published a while ago, but I heard about it recently, like within the last year, in reference to just the renewal of uh, science fiction writing and the different um, books that have come and gone and have kind of propelled science fiction recently in the book world um, into different elevations to a greater popularity than it has in, um, I guess, in previous years. Um, the Three Body uh, is a, one of those, is from China, is one of those that's, you know books that people have often talk about as really um, the pinnacle of the new wave of science fiction writing. And the story of, Stories of Ibis is one of those books that was mentioned in in conjunction, in conjunction with a bunch of other uh, novels and short stories and stuff of that nature. So you have to give this particular book to Agent 1. So people are speculating whether you have to have the Japanese original version or if you can have a translated version. I guess you're going to have to find out um, when you give the object to that particular field agent. And as I stated, the clock has, I guess you're going to say started or is ticking on this particular um, clue, which is interesting considering you have to find people, and, you know, first identify them and then find them wherever they are in the world and then also find these objects and put it all together. I would think that for this particular real world event they would give um, people more time but maybe what needs to be done has also has a timetable on it so so people are having a hard time finding some of these field agents um, some have been public in saying that they've been able to identify uh, some of them or all of them who knows if it's disinformation what's going on but I found this interesting that someone um, Twitter user Kevin Elliott put actually like a seven dollar bounty on being able to find um, Agent Two, uh, his location, if you will, and asking for some retweets and some help for, or assistance on this. So it would be interesting to see, you know, as far as future clues go to obtain, you know, uh, the different keys, but whether or not people are going to buy keys or buy solutions from people. Uh, we'll see as time progresses, as more keys get released and we're getting, I would say, closer to being able to potentially unlock the bounty, um, what that dynamic will be if there will be more of these uh, bounties out there like, hey, who has key like 
324 or do you know the solution I'll pay you 50 or 100 or whatever the value could be so this message uh, satellite message 23 was released it is from the Satoshi uh, treasure hunt game makers and I guess this might be considered one of their mini hunts that's supposed to happen um, along with the uh, game itself uh, but here's the message. Uh, we're taking some time to cultivate our appreciation in the arts. Remember, as Bob Ross says, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. First stop on the SD Art Tour. Uh, it gives you a link here. Of course, art often must be seen in person to be fully appreciated. If one is in a rush to appreciate this piece, a large exp uh, expenditure of worthless fiat may be necessary to gain access if one is a bit more patient, the work can be viewed for free a tad later. And then it's signed with a PG signature, and we'll get into that. And it's uh, a PGA, open PG from um, a really good company and a site called Keybase. And this is, uh, this is something that the game makers stated that they were going to do, that they were going to sign their messages so people are aware of the fact or know that they are the ones that are actually um, putting out these different messages. There was also another, I want to say clue maybe, or another mini hunt. This is a picture that was tweeted on the official Associated Treasures uh, site. It's a, I guess an art piece or not really sure what to make of this image, but people are, are currently working on um, trying to solve this particular puzzle. Now this is the particular website that contains the, that you were directed to, that contains the artwork. It's called, uh, you know, Team Human. Again, we have these um, um, ASCII key uh, writings here for, for the site. You know, these images are very human faces that are pixelated. Um, moving to the blockchain, come and become part of my work and my arch uh, artistic practice. I'm pleased to announce my new exploration of art and blockchain. I'm entering the blockchain with Team Human Project, a new project, uh, art project which enables art lovers, investors, and collectors to participate in my art practice and collect my work using the blockchain as the main platform. The project is both an exploration of blockchain language and mechanisms and a new form of connection between visual art, artists, and audience. The project includes a video piece, prints, and a blockchain certificate and a crypto token. And then here is the video. Um, a new dynamic uh, portrait-based video art that creates a unique, transferable face built from Team Human members. The piece will be created, and displayed, and collected through the blockchain network the piece of extension of a series of real-time portraits that I have been working on exhibited in recent years and around the world. In addition, a series of five original print pastes on the piece will be created. Purchase editions of team human art pieces are tracked and notarized with the identity of the buyer on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's the blockchain that they are using. They have um, an exhibit May 10th and 11th. Um, you can register to secure participation of the poster. And they have the team membership, human video. So people are going through and breaking this down and going to New York or having some people out in New York getting ready for May 10th and 11th to meet up people and um, figure out how this plays a part in the game. I'm not playing the video because I don't know if there will be a copy strike on me or, or whatever. So I highly recommend just um, going to the link in the show notes and you'll be able to um, see for yourself and watch the video. So those are the, the different hunts that are going on right now. It looks like two mini art ones and then the big hunt for the hunted key and trying to find the different field agents. Um, just kind of like, I guess, maintenance if you will. Um, John Cantrell, who helped solve the first three keys, broke down the solution for um, the fourth key, the rabbit key, uh, help, let's see, um, 
uh, Autobot, yeah, I'm sorry, blanking here. The Autobot, is, which helps organize and people for the treasure hunt f through Discord, uh, he's decided to make this open source, allowing people to be able to um, contribute to the program, see it, uh, verify information, and just uh, work on it in general. Um, just to kind of briefer about it, you know, it was built with the intention to address the challenges around forming and managing teams to hunt for Satoshi's treasure. You can think of Ordo as having four main features that all work together to efficiently run a team. Democratic decision making, contribution tracking, key verification and sharing. Uh, this feature is currently unavailable to Satoshi Treasury releases the Peterson com commitments or public keys that each share so I can implement a verification scheme. Um, puzzle tools and just you know contribution so it's now um, open source so if you have the ability to code want to contribute to this it might even be a way of you having basically being able to contribute to the game itself particularly if you your, your team is using discord you can be like hey may not be able to do all these different solutions or have the network to find all these real world things but I can do the programming and building the tools and that might be a means for people to be able to contribute to the to the game itself and however your group if your group wins what's the prize that might factor in so I thought that that was good um, of John Cantrell and it just speaks to the spirit and the nature of what people are looking for um, from not only from each other but from this experience as well just learning how and breaking down and figuring out how to do all this if you will so one of the means of obtaining a particular key is through a business card um, Eric Meister one of the game makers will be at the magical crypto conference on, on the 11th um, May 11th in New York which also happens to coincide when the art exhibit is happening and he will be bringing his business card and if you're able to obtain the business card of his uh, there'll be one or two that have been very public about having business cards and the some of the other names are kind of iffy but you if you're able to obtain I believe it's like 18 business cards you can potentially put together a key and then you can have a key that maybe nobody else has because you haven't been able no one else has been able to collect all these business cards so he's been pretty open and so has Dobie Wand about whether or not they have their cards on them and their locations and where you can meet them to be able to obtain the business cards so if you happen to be in New York or know someone who's in New York um, the Magical Crypto Conference is uh, taking place again on May 11th and 12th in New York. Uh, the prices will increase by May 4th if you wanted to attend the conference. Uh, now Eric and both Dovi have attended conferences uh, throughout April and they've been willing to meet people outside the conference. Again, they'll just kind of announce where their location is and when they will be meeting people. But Eric also will be uh, speaking um, at the conference and so there's a potential for another like clue drop or hint or some questions given to the type of speakers and people attending the conference that might be like kind of quizzing him about Satoshi's treasure hunt that might uh, end up coming to our benefit if you will or even the benefit of the person who asks the right questions and um, obtains the answer because uh, I'm not sure what their media um, is going to be like let's check the media partners here um, how much of this is going to be released uh, what did Bitcoin do Unchained is a podcast Morero Talk is a podcast uh, whether this is going to be streamed YouTube so it might be one of those things where you have to kind of be there to order to obtain the information and again this these dates coincide with the same dates that the event the public event of the artwork for the I guess you could say the mini art hunt, if you will. It takes place in New York, May 11th and May 12th. I'm hoping that future events, if you will, do take place outside of the States and so that other people can 
um, participate, whether it be, you know, in Canada or uh, in China, India, Russia. I'm just, I'm just hoping they're able to. They stated that they want to make this global. And it appears that some of the fuel agents are, in fact, outside of the states. And the GPS coordinates for the f first three keys were, in fact, locations outside um, of the states as well. But I'm, I'm hoping more of these uh, conferences and these uh, impersonal events and finding people in these art things, locations, physical locations, or feats of labor, if you will, will um, also take place outside the state. So it becomes more of a global effort and is more of a thing where you have to like really pull on your network and um, finding people or even, I don't know, uh, rabbit tasking somebody to go, go to a particular place and location and uh, obtaining a, uh, a key or a clue for a key. So one of the things that the game makers have done is stated that they are going to PGP uh, sign their messages so that you know that they are the ones sending out the information and that way um, <coughs> you know it's not false, it's not disinformation, you know that when an announcement ha is happening it's a valid announcement. So uh, Eric Mays has um, one of the game makers has uh, signed up for Keybase, which is a very easy, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more, but basically a very easy means of just um, verifying people's identity, if you will, and, um, <coughs> and their keys. Uh, it requires the people to verify their, their information is signing off and saying yes, this person's information is accurate and da 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 da. Um, and we'll get a little bit, a bit into it about. There are some holes in this, but for right now, you have Eric Mays, and he has verified his Twitter account, uh, his Hacker News. Uh, he has uh, his PGG key here, and. Um, what is this? Oh, if you wanted to give him stellar rooms, you can do so. He has his wallet up here. And you can chat with him. I believe Dovey's on here as well as the official Twitter. And we'll get to the official Twitter in a second. Um, this is their, this is the Twitter um, official announcement that all feature keys on the site in the wild will be signed with our PGG key. The fingerprint is this. Um, I'll break down for those who are unaware of what a PGP key is and the mechanisms um, in a moment. But this is the fingerprint so you can verify that someone is not falsifying information that is actually their um, signature and not a fake. So this is key base. Um, it's been around, I want to say, almost like four years now. It basically secures group files and chat for everyone. Um, it's kind of think of it, it it operates in a similar fashion to Slack or Discord, but much of it is uh, encrypted. It started out as invitation only and then eventually expanded to be open to the public. Uh, it's for communities, families, friends, and schools and companies. Key basis for everyone is growing fast. Unlike Slack, it's free and without ads. If your group data is in the cloud, it should be encrypted. If you're putting people together, give Keybase a try. So what you can do, let me see if I can pull up my stuff. Before we pull my stuff, I'm um, just kind of go over what it, what it is that they do. Uh, Keybase is more than a website. If you're comfortable working in Trimble, you should download the Keybase app. You can do some much with it, you can sign, verify, encrypt, generate messages, sign code, move keys around, all using GPG for the for the crypto, uh, cryptography, not the not the currencies. Uh, trust follow signature chains and public keys. Every account on Keybase has a public history, a sig chain. The Keybase clients re uh, reconstruct the present without trusting Keybase servers. And when you follow someone on Keybase, you can sign a snapshot of your view of the claims in their sign chain. So it's a way of just kind of verifying, trust but verifying information. You can chat with somebody encrypted. Uh, the Keybase file system is on the cloud. It's live for all, but it's also encrypted, so they can look at your information. 
uh, documents um, are encrypted. Um, Paraproof integration guide, key based protocol for external servers, which should be added as a proof integers. Teams, you can um, basically you can do a GitHub here in Keybase and be able to um, secure your information, encrypt it, and not worry about somebody, um, or in this case, Keybase, being able to be able to look at your information. Lockdown mode for users who want extra protection for their Keybase account. They have Stellar Wallet. Um, depending on how you feel about other coins other than Bitcoin as a good or plus thing. Uh, then they have a, they're basically a lot of their stuff is based out of Linux, a uh, Linux user guide. So this is one of the groups I'm in. I'm trying to get out of it. I don't want their information out there. So back. So back. Alright. Alright, so I follow some people on here. Um, so people follow back me. It's under my username, Herosia Shib. I have the ability to chat with uh, anyone I'm following with, or as you can see here, I actually sent a message to the Twitter following to see if there will be an official chat chat to the game here. Haven't received response back on that one. Files. You can actually have um, files stored on here for people to look at. Just like in the cloud, but it's encrypted. So I have my podcast, my podcast that I have done um, stored here on the cloud. I actually probably need to update that. I do think there is a limit. Again, you can have a wallet if you want to. I have it added a wallet git you can have a git repository through keybase here if you're into uh, programming and things of that nature you can search for people that you want to find and add them to your list of people that you were following so like adobe one Who's right here goes by the name of Doby. Um, and you know, I'm following her. So let's go under my particular profile. So a way to verify your identity is you can um, add your Twitter handle, your GitHub, your Reddit. You can create your public key. You can add a Bitcoin address. Um, a Z address here, and then here is your, my I guess my federated address. I guess it created that for me. You can prove your hacker news um, identity here, and you can add your website. These are all means of being able to kind of verify your identity without submitting like your social security number, your physical address, um, a picture identity, or anything like that. And why I think this is important is it just allows for people to, if, because social media is so pervasive and prevalent, and many of these sites have been around for a very long time, you can kind of, in essence, verify a person's history, if you will, via online. Now, this doesn't make them exactly fully trustworthy because they can either easily have bought these accounts or they can just create the accounts like the day before. But you see the history, like if the Twitter account was like two days ago and then they created their key base identity, you might be a little bit like, eh, about a particular person versus somebody who's had like a GitHub identity since the beginning of GitHub, who's been very active on Hacker News for who knows how long, who's had a Twitter account since Twitter has been, been around and you can kind of go through their Twitter history, if you will, or their Twitter identity and see, oh, okay, this is that person. And same thing with Reddit. It's just a means of we're uh, taking someone's social media history and attaching it to an identity. And then you have the PG key, which is right here, where all the, uh, basically all the information is signed um, all your information is encrypted and, and that way people can oops,
know it's you who's making the, the signatures, if you will. And we'll get into what PGP is in a, in a moment. But again, it's just gathering social media, social media accounts uh, under basically a username or the same username you've been using, whether it be your, if you wish to put your real name out there or um, a handle out there and people can track your information or track who you are, verify who you are and de determine whether or not they wish to associate themselves with you. Oh, and they have more identity options. So, let's see. Wow, they've really expanded it since the last time I've been on here. Oh, Mastodon. So Mastodon is another social platform. People are, are gravitating towards it because it's federated. You don't have to worry about ads, your information, nah, depending on if you trust the, you know, the person who's maintaining the server. Um, people are doing weird things with Mastodon where even if they run the server, the information's encrypted so they can't um, look at your stuff or no one can look at your stuff. Um, is a way of protection, if you will. Uh, so Mastodon's on here and lists all the different instances they're called, the different servers and different groups. Um, Hacker news and your own site. So it's another means of social identity, if you will. And that is Mastodon social is like the main, main one. And you can type in your username and then authorize under my desk on Mastodon social. And what you do is you do what it does is basically puts out a proof that you attach to um, Mastodon. They used to have Facebook on here, but I'm glad they take it, taken that off. Um, for Twitter, for example, you would have a tweet that says, "This is my keybase identity," and you would keep it up, and it would constantly. I won't say constantly, but if you're if you're move Say, for example, you use access to your Twitter, you can say, uh, please revoke this. Uh, you can view the proof and it verifies that you, you have access to that particular social media account. You can just, you can just slap a, 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 a Twitter handle, if you will, if you don't have access to it. And it just basically says, verify it on Hiroja Shive on Keybase. This is my information, you can find me here. So that's the basics of Keybase. Uh, you, you don't have to download the program. You can go basically through the web portal if you want to. It's keybase.io. Uh, I have a link in the show notes. Um, I, I would encourage you to just kind of go on the site, mess around with it if you like, see if it's something for you. You might find it's better than Slack or Telegram or Matrix or any other um, kind of community work-based hubs out there um, and if you're somebody who uses Linux on a regular basis this might be a better platform than um, those other ones for you so the last thing to wrap up is the PGP why it's important for the game makers to verify their messages and validate them using this method. And what is PGP? So PGP has been around since 1991. It came out of basically as a result of many individuals seeking and wanting privacy. Um, up, up to 1991, the ability to use cryptography to encrypt messages was basically in the realm of big business and the government. And it was restricted, really, to use math to hide messages. Uh, something that, at the time that uh, PGG was being released, where people were trying to get RSA um, out there in the world and not considered to be, um, it was classified as musicians. And there's a whole, whole period of time um, in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, called the Crypto Wars in which eventually these restrictions were lifted and you can now, private individuals can encrypt their messages without being um, afraid of the government or having to have to backdoor or give the, uh, the ability for the government to decrypt people's messages. Um, the whole crypto war thing is a, a completely s separate entity and that is another video for maybe another time. 
but this this came out. Uh, it was developed by Phil Simran. Uh, he has been he's a cyber cypherpunker. Uh, he's one of the early like kind of collective individuals to help give birth to the World Wide Web. Uh, this came out in 1991. World Wide Web came out in 1989, and as a result of his actions and his ability to bring forth this particular cryptography, uh, people have the ability to safeguard their messages. Now, it's not going to keep you anonymous. You're not going to be not known in the public, but it can keep your messages private if you do certain safeguard uh, methods. But what is PGB? So, PGB stands for Pretty Good Privacy. It's an encryption program that might they mainly use use for email encryption, but it can be used for encrypting any sort of data. So people use this to encrypt their hard drives, um, yeah, like hard drives, servers, um, access to information. It's primarily used for emails. It's, it can even be built into email services like Proton Mail, um, Tutani, uh, Thunder Mail. If you've seen that, you can actually upload your uh, public and private keys so you can encrypt your email messages and Keybase uses it, which is the type of service that um, er the game makers and the uh, uh, Satoshi Treasures uh, messaging services, their Twitter account, uh, is using to encrypt their messages so that people know that um, they are who they say they are, they are the ones who are releasing this message. Before you read this tutorial, please note one thing. PGP provides privacy, but not anonymity. It will not hide your name. Quite the opposite. It will attach your name and email to any message you sign, and your recipient's name and email to any message you encrypt. So it's associated to your email. So for example, if you had a Gmail account that was blah, 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 6379 at Gmail, and you send your messages, whether it be like, you know, for businesses to a Verizon account, you want to pay your bill. Or to your friend who's ring, 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 drop, 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 drop at gmail dot com. Those emails, e that email name will be associated to um, that 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 account, that PG encryption account. And if you attach your real identity by either accident or um, on purpose, uh, anyone who seeks to want to get your private key to decrypt your messages. We'll probably target you as an individual if that is the case, either by hacking your computer systems or by some other means. So it's very important to be able to not to have your private keys, um, maybe sitting on your desktop, maybe have it on a USB drive, uh, because you know to be able to revoke it in case your your email gets hacked or that information gets leaked, and you want to be able to prevent people from falsifying um, your messages. Are pretending to be you. Terminology. Uh, PGP is a program that was initially released in 1991 by Phil Zimmerman. Open PGP is a standard. Anyone can create their own encryption program if they follow the standards. So if you go through these guidelines, it's just like a, a particular recipe for you know chocolate chip cookies. You get the basics. If you follow these standards, uh, you will be able to duplicate or create um, a PGD program. Now if you try to be extra flary with it, you might end up um, causing some problems for you because uh, when it comes to cartography, you have to be kind of exacting in your standards and implementations or uh, information will leak. There are many programs following the standard, but most commonly used one being GPG or GNU Privacy Guard. Note, PGP usually refers to the standard and open PGP, not the program, okay? So how does PGP work? So you have what is called a public key that you send to the sender uh, and the receiver and the public key and private key. So my blah, 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 blah email has a, I send that public key to rain, rain, rain drop so that any message I send to, to them, they'll be able to decrypt it. Uh, my private key is the message that encodes it, so he can't like do the same same thing. Say he's me and blah blah blah, or make any messages with uh, stating that he that that individual is me because he doesn't have the private key that makes the encryption. All he's able to do is basically decrypt it. 
think of the sense of if you were to um, as an easy analogy uh, invisible pen invisible ink right uh, I write a message in invisible ink I send the piece of paper may I write something on top of it and then my friend has the uh, decoder pen that go he just swipes over the the written above written message and to get the hidden message underneath he has a special pen that allows him to do that and that in essence is the most basic most simplest way I can express how um, online the BGB key system works you have a public key and a private key the private key is yours that's what you encode the information with the public key is what you give out give place it in uh, key servers that have your public key associated with your email in case mine is blah 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 and my friends is rain 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 drip drip and by having these public keys that we're able to read um, the messages um, that are coming from each other um, public keys are the public because you just them freely without hurting the structure of your keys private keys are private because you should protect them very well PGP encrypts your private key with a passphrase, so if it accidentally gets leaked, your communications aren't necessarily compromised, but it's still a good idea to generate a new key pair in case of a leak. So if, if a leak occurs, you can generate a new one associated with your email, uh, let your uh, people in your list know that the previous uh, means of encryption is not good any longer, they might, might, might want to protect themselves in a sense, and you can also do a, what is called a, re a revoking where you can revoke and say you disavow this particular public and private key pair so that way anyone who receives that type of message and type of encryption knows is not coming from you. Uh, it's important to differentiate between encryption and authentication. This is why PG supports signing as well. And this is where we get into um, why it's important that they're signing their messages so you know exactly that it's coming from them because someone could get a hold of your private key but you want to be able to make sure that the signatures and the signing if they might try to fake it or, or some fake out or something like that you want to make sure that it's actually truly truly coming from that person uh, your private key may be secure but your email is not Att attackers can try to make it look like your email came from you or even send from your address someone can access your computer the email provider can send emails from your address extremely easy and because public keys are usually publicly available without authentication it's e extremely easy to supply someone with fake information you know bob receives an encrypted email from alice at example.com the email came from alice's email address should bob trust it no it needs to be signed and see below this obviously depends on how secure your computer is if you use a full disk encryption an email client that remembers your password etc um, and kind of breaks down into the encrypted messages a little bit further i might uh, go more in depth on this um, at a different time to go into the whole PGP thing. I just want to kind of give you a kind of a basic gloss of it, what it is. Um, this is what it looks like. How do keys and encrypted data looks like? PGP looks like this. So you see this right here in this block right here. Notice that the PG public key block, this is the public key. It says it right here. A private key would have a PGP private key block instead of that. An encrypted file slash message would have PGP message. Uh, note that this is a near human readable output and present using uh, ASIC mode, meaning American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Uh, we're eventually going to do that because there's a lot of these ASIC messages throughout these different clues for the different keys. <coughs> I already spoke about this um, a moment ago, um, replication certifi certificates. Once you generate your key, key pair, you should generate a, a replication certificate as well. In case your private key gets leaked, you just upload the replication certificate to a key server and it will show that your key has been revoked to the next key info. In, info. Again, to protect your expiration dates are another one, particularly if maybe you're, you're only using the email for a brief period of time, you might want to do it for just a year. That way you safeguard your, your messages and the people who are receiving your messages know that you know when the year is up, that key is no longer good to, um, from that date on, it might be a different 
key that's going to happen. And then there's key servers. They're the ones that kind of like synchronize and keep hold of the different public keys associated with um, email addresses. One that's common is the MIT, uh, the MIT key server. I believe it's not only the largest, but one of the oldest ones. Okay, so fingerprinting. Although it's not always possible, the best way to exchange keys in advanced communications, since keys are very big and practical to exchange in full length, PG key, PGB keys have their fingerprints. It's basically a shorter version of the key. The fingerprint of this key is blah 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 in red here. Note there's also a key ID which is even shorter but obviously much less secure. Use fingerprints. So this is what uh, was this is fingerprinting. That's what was published on Twitter under the game maker Eric Meltzer's uh, Twitter handle as well as uh, I want to say to shit treasure, uh, to Tosh Toshisha treasure, their um, Twitter handle, the official handle handle of Satoshi's treasure hunt. Uh, they pr they uh, publish their finger fingerprints so you can know that uh, snatch it and be able to get their public uh, key for yourself. So in addition to this, you need to know which key to use as other people can upload keys with the same name and email address to key servers. Hosting the key on your personal website or adding the fingerprint to a Twitter bio is useful. A fingerprint is all you need to download the key from the key server. This message here is a PGP sign message. Uh, what we have here is the message of its release to the Blockstream satellite. It talks about, I guess you could say, the mini hunt that we spoke to about earlier, uh, where you go to this site, uh, Shirley Shore's Team Human, where they're going to have the art exhibit at the same time that Eric Meltzer is there for the Magical Crypto Conference. Uh, the message basically says, we're taking some time to cultivate our appreciation of the arts. I already read this earlier. But right here, this is where it's signed. It's uh, the signature. Is down below, here's the signature. So we are going to copy this message here, and we are going to verify the message through Keybase. Now, if you have your own personal uh, PGT system that you want to use to verify this um, information, you can uh, do so. I'm just personally using Keybase because I'm already a member. If you would like to do this yourself, I would highly recommend because Keybase is pretty easy. And using their web portal, you can just sign up, become a member, it's free. And like the most minimal social media thing you can do is like Twitter, if you like. Um, and it will give you access to their entire system where you can encrypt messages, decrypt, sign, verify. And so what we're doing is we're verifying this message here. And so I hit verify. And it's going to give me the message itself and that the signed text is in fact signed by Toshisha Treasure and if I click on it it is going to go to their um, <clears throat> member identity as you can see their website has been verified that they are the owner of the website uh, their Twitter handle and this is their fingerprint that they release and they're only using one device and I'm currently following them right now um, you can keep you can chat with them and you can also send them um, encrypted messages if you like so that's pretty simple very easy way to verify messages if you like coming from the game makers uh, you can do this with uh, the the Satoshi Treasure Twitter handle or um, Eric Melser has put his key base um, out there I know Dovi Wan has a key base um, handle, but I don't know if she, she's going to be releasing any keys soon or not. Um, but it's just another method of just making sure that any messages that are received through the, black, the blockchain satellite, uh, the Twitter, if you will, when it comes to the keys being released or any messages from the game makers, again, there won't be any disinformation. You know it's coming from them. And so that's pretty much it. That is a, a wrap for this this week. Uh, the HUD key has been released. There are individuals that you have to file, find. Um, 
three field agents. You have to give them these three books, these objects. Uh, and then only one team or one individual, if you're able to complete the mission, if you will. It's kind of like Mission Impossible if you think about it. Uh, you will only have the access to that key. And whether or not you want to disclose it publicly or not, that's up to you. I guess you can say, in essence, the game makers will know if it's been found. But we, but we won't know who's found it. There is a bit of a clicking time clock on this, where I guess you can say it's a bit, bit more pressure on uh, the different groups and individuals seeking to solve this particular uh, key to get on it, if you will, because they will, like Disney, go back into the vault. And we'll see when the next clue drops for the next key, you know, series of clues for the next key, uh, when that will happen. It can happen at any time. There is an open space there, so it could be tomorrow which it would be Friday again you can drop again on a Sunday um, we'll see uh, but so far it's been very fun it's been very challenging trying to figure out how to uh, solve these different clues and um, basically figure out these puzzles if you will to in essence um, for me personally trying to, to obtain the key these keys myself even when they've been solved just trying to figure out how people we're able to come up with the solutions and either duplicate that work and uh, in essence trying to you know learn how to use these tools to you know enhance my own personal education but also enhance my skill set so I can be a better hunter in finding these keys. Um, so until next time hunters, um, the hunt is on. I am Hirosha Scheib. Uh, you've been watching Satoshi's Treasure Hunters and like I said, the hunt is on.